So today we're gonna to talk about the design of domes, a relatively simple part, but something that can have all kinds of twistiness, especially on the inside. So a traditional dome is really easy to design. You take a sphere and you cut it in half and boom, you have a dome. But the issue with domes is that they're actually fairly complex in order to get a good quality part out of mass production FDM, which we do here at Slant3D. Because the interior creates this overlap where you have the lines basically print out in space so you end up with this dragginess look inside of it. And that's not the greatest thing in the world. And if you're doing a thin walled dome, that can get even worse because that distortion can actually propagate to the outside to where you can't really get rid of it. So how can you get rid of this distortion and how can you design a dome to be more manufacturable than just the traditional hemisphere? Well, the first thing you can actually do is to just change the design of the dome itself a little bit. Make it a little bit more egg-shaped. Pull up the top just a little bit and also taper the inside so that it comes more to a point than it traditionally otherwise would. That way you get away from this flat overhang but still curved and start bringing it up to a tighter point to where that can be reduced inside of there. But again, this can require quite a bit of stretching to make it disappear entirely. So in order to get the exterior dome shape without having to actually deform the shape of it all, you can actually go ahead and change the interior without changing the exterior. This is not a molding process to where you have to be a constant thickness all the way through. You can design a dome to have an exterior that is a perfect hemisphere, but then the interior be kind of a sharp angle. That way you get a really clean print on the inside, but the outside still looks exactly the same as the original. This is a really good way to make it more manufacturable and to create a cleaner interior without actually changing the exterior geometry. But if you need that interior geometry, then you can get into a tougher spot. If you have to have the inside actually be a perfect circle all the way through, many people would just say, well, support it on the inside. But generated supports are actually really terrible with the domes because again, the same factors that create this sort of overlap and dragginess inside of there actually contribute to making supports bad because supports tear off and merge and all the rest of it. It's just not a good way of doing it. But if you have to, the best option is not actually auto-generated supports because you don't know how much control you have of them if you're doing print-on-demand through like our Etsy app or mass production in general. You wanna have it dialed straight in. So designed supports can often be the best where you have an interior kind of mushroom that is supporting that upper arch. This needs to be spaced out about half a millimeter from the top, maybe even more. That way you know that this has perfect amount of spacing to support that really nicely to make sure that that entire upper curved dome is printed really reliably. Of course, design supports you wanna create as minimal as possible while still making sure that they're stable. So have the nice wide upper cap for this little mushroom that's supporting it and then a thin stock below that is still stable enough to print by itself. And that way you have a really good piece of support. If for some reason you don't want to put in the time to design supports, or if you're making a dome that is so large that you want something more efficient, generated supports are generally more material efficient than design supports. So in that case, what you actually wanna do is still have the exterior dome, traditionally as you would, but then the interior, go ahead and cap off the very tip of the dome on the inside. That way, auto-generated supports have a very clear delineated area where they attach to, and they're able to pop off really cleanly and easily because again, they don't have a really steep angle that they're kind of merging to and can interface with. There's a really clean, nice top, smooth, flat area that they're able to plug right into and then pluck right off of. So it's very easy to have them be generated in a very clear area while still being really easy to post process. And this is a great way to mass produce a dome to where you have a minimal amount of support material in order to still get a really good, clean, crisp part all the way through. Now that all focused mainly on the interior of the dome, how to get rid of that overhang and that dragginess. We also talk about the design of the exterior of the dome in another video, and you should check that one out over here. But if there's other features that you'd like to see us talk about and go through the process of different ways of getting it made, go ahead and comment with those down below and leave us a like and subscribe. Have a great day, everybody.